St. Marcus Academy was founded in 1907 as a college preparatory school where young men and women could be educated and nurtured in a Christian environment. While preparing students for higher education was the goal of the upper and middle schools, the academy also provided for the training of younger students in the lower school. As the premier boarding school in the Central Texas area, the academy welcomed students from across Texas, throughout the United States, and around the world. Over the years, more than 5,000 students have received a diploma from SMA. During their time at SMA, these students considered the academy to be much more than just a school. It was their home away from home. Likewise, the students regarded the caring staff and faculty at the academy as family. This was especially true for Lee Haig, who came to the academy from Austin in 1934 during the depths of the Great Depression. Lee's mother had passed away two years before, and her father knew that four-year-old Lee, along with her older brother and sister, M.K. Jr. and Christine, would be well cared for at the academy. He wanted his children to all be together as a family, and they would have that opportunity at San Marcos Academy. Because Lee was so young, she lived with Academy President Raymond Kavnis and his wife, whom she affectionately called School Daddy and School Mama. Their nicknames actually came out sounding more like Cool Daddy and Cool Mama when Lee would call for them. Dr. and Mrs. Kavnis helped raise Lee, known to her friends at the time as Lily May. The Kavnises taught Lee in their home until she was old enough to begin classes at the Academy. During her 10 years at SMA, Lee was active in many campus organizations, including the Glee Club, the Brother and Sister Club, the Basketball Team, and the Philathian Club. She was Vice President of her class during her junior year and Secretary in her senior year. She also was a sponsor for Company A and the school's Corps of Cadets. Lee made many lifelong friends while at the Academy, including the Cabinet's daughter, Ramona. Carlita Dryling and Opal Richardson of Houston were also part of the tight-knit group of Academy co-eds who would remain close friends as Academy alumni. As seniors in the 1943-1944 school year, Lee and her classmates occupied themselves with campus chores, homework, and athletic events accompanied by the music of the day, songs by Judy Garland, Bean Crosby, the Ames Brothers, and the big bands of Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey. Late in the spring semester, the editor of the campus newspaper took her lead from the popular song, Going to Take a Sentimental Journey, and interviewed members of the senior class to see what impressions they would take with them of their senior year at the academy. Lee Haig was one of the first to be interviewed. She reported that her favorite song was The Breeze and I, and that Artie Shaw was her favorite band leader. Her hobbies included collecting snapshots, swimming, roller skating, and walking in the rain. The interview also revealed that one of Lee's nicknames on campus was Pill, a good-natured reference to her short stature. Lee was also described in the 1944 yearbook as dainty, ambitious, and neat. Of course, students at the Academy were also preoccupied with serious matters during the early 1940s when the country was embroiled in World War II. The Academy, like many other institutions, did its patriotic duty by holding trial blackouts, rationing the supply of scarce resources, and encouraging the purchase of defense stamps and war bonds through editorials in the campus newspaper. Lee's beloved school daddy, Dr. Raymond Kavnis, left his post as Academy President in 1943 to report for naval duty in Florida. Many of Lee Jamil's Academy classmates would answer the call of duty as well, enlisting in military service as soon as possible after graduation. A little more than two hours away from the Academy campus, another young man joined the Marines after graduating from St. Thomas High School of Houston in 1942. Joe Jamil would serve in the Pacific Theater for the duration of the war, rising to the rank of sergeant before returning to Texas, where his path and Lee's path would cross. 
When Joe Jamil's troop ship brought him safely home from the war, he entered the University of Texas to study history. Meanwhile, after graduating from the academy, Lee went on to attend the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio. While there, Lee and Joe were introduced to one another by Joe's sister, Florence. Lee received her undergraduate degree and moved to Austin to pursue graduate work in speech pathology at the University of Texas. She and Joe were married in 1949, as Joe was just beginning law school at UT. Lee had a successful career as a special education teacher in Austin while Joe completed his law degree. The Jamil family grew with the birth of three sons, Joseph III, Randall, and Robert, until cancer took her away from her family in 2007. Lee Haig Jamil was a loving wife, mother, and grandmother, as well as a devoted friend and mentor. As a philanthropist, she gave her time and resources to support such causes as education, health care, and art. She also was a lifelong friend of her beloved academy and of many former classmates from those early years in San Marcos. The Lee Haig Jamil Special Events Center at San Marcos Academy will be a fitting tribute to Lee Jamil's life and legacy. The center, prominently located along the main drive of the campus, will house a varsity gym, space for fine arts instruction and rehearsals, and a foyer with a reception area that will house distinguished alumni photos and artifacts. Future additions to the facility could include a fine arts performance area and a lecture hall. Details for the construction of this beautiful multifunctional center are now being finalized with architect Robert Luna of San Antonio. Following the groundbreaking ceremony January 25th, construction of the facility will begin under the direction of Eaton Construction Company of San Antonio. The Lee Haig Jamil Special Events Center will honor the memory of one of San Marcos Academy's most distinguished graduates. When completed, this wonderful new facility will serve the needs of Academy students like Lee for many, many years to come.